Welcome back to the Gun Dungeon. Got a good video today. I think you're going to like it. If anybody's watched this channel very much, you know I'm a big fan of the 6.5 Grendel cartridge, especially in an AR-15 platform. I just think it brings a lot to the table for its case limitations, magazine size limitations. It just it has a lot to offer for its size, just in general. But in a couple of the videos that I've made where I've had some hand loads using 6.5 Grendel, I've got some smoke in the comments about how my loads were going pretty slow. Well, there's a couple reasons for that. One, typically your most accurate loads aren't your fastest loads. It's just the way it works out most of the time. So when I load for Grendel, I'm normally loading something for accuracy. Uh, I do have some loads for terminal performance, but normally accuracy and terminal performance, you have to pick one. If you get really, really lucky and find that super good load that's very fast and very accurate, good, perfect. Hang on to it. Keep using that forever. But what we're going to do today, this video is going to be all about speed from the 6.5 Grendel. And a lot of times you'll see load data that'll have a velocity listed. And by the time you run it through a different barrel length, it's totally different. All of your different powders are going to have different burn rates. So your barrel lengths are going to be affected by that, or your velocities are going to be affected by your barrel length and your burn rates. So I've got four of what I think are the top performing powders in 6.5 Grendel, at least by the load data that I could find. I have four of those that are going to give the highest velocities based on the data that I've looked at. I've worked up to the max loads. I haven't shot any of the max loads yet. That's what we're getting ready to do. But let me show you what we're working with real quick and we'll go from there, get some chronograph data. I'm gonna be shooting a 16 inch barrel and an 18 inch barrel. And I've got some of these 123 grain ELD bullets. Boy, those are pretty, ain't they? And that's what I'm gonna be launching. So it's gonna be 123 grain bullet data that we're working with here. I know you can get the 90 grainers up really, really fast, but I like 123 grain and that's what we're gonna be doing today. But let me show you what we're working with real quick. So we've got the CFE 223 powder, Varga, of course, H335 is a very popular one in this. Then in my big jug of BLC2 powder back here, there's our box of bullets, some brass, small rifle primers. And I'm going to load some up here. But that's the powders that we're going to be using. So this is going to be our starting points. This is the powder. This is the max charge. You'll see the advertised velocities. Now, all of them, except for this one, you'll see the little star here. All of these are from Hornady, their load data. This one is not because Hornady's data for H335 was very, very low for some reason. It even showed very, very low velocities. And I have no idea how they got that low of a max charge, but this one is from Hodgdon's website. This is the listed max charge from their website and the advertised velocity. So you can see from the two advertised velocities, the H335 and the CFE223 are supposed to give us our highest velocities. Keep in mind, they create this by using a 24 inch barrel. So this all could change. What could be fastest or fastest, second fastest, third, fourth, that could change. So once you get out here and those burn rates and those shorter barrels, everything could change, but that's what we're getting ready to figure out. I'm not going to shoot like a group of three and get an average. I'm just going to get one velocity reading if I can. If I have to, if I get an error or something really strange looking, I'll load up another one. But if not, I'm going to be standing out there shooting through a chronograph forever and it's raining. So I'm just going to get a velocity reading. If I get one, good. It's going to be within shot to shot 30, 40 feet per second anyways. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to load some of these up, get some chronograph readings, and I'll see you right back here. All right, 16 inch barrel. Twenty two fifty nine. That was the BLC two. Twenty two eighty seven. That was the Varget. Twenty three ten. H three thirty five. Twenty three fifty nine. 
for the CFE 223. So just for the sake of argument, this is a factory Hornady black ELD round. Let's see what we're getting out of this with the 16 inch. Hope y'all like my flip flops. Error, I've got another one, hang on. Twenty-three fifty-one with factory Hornady black. All right, eighteen-inch barrel now. Error on the first one. I'll have to make another one of those. Twenty-two forty-eight for the Varget. Error. 79 for that was the CFE 223 and now I have a factory blackout or factory black 2335 I gotta go load two more rounds real quick all right BLC2 up first then HG35 hopefully I get a reading this time I'm gonna back up a little bit 389 from the BLC2. 2402 from H335. All right, it's number crunching time. This is what we got. These are two Hornady Black factory loads down here. You can see there was a couple instances where the 18 inch barrel, like the factory load, gave us a little less velocity. Now keep in mind, these are all one shot readings. So the average could be up or down 20, 30 feet per second, either direction. No way to know without shooting groups, but that would be a whole lot of chronograph work right there. But this is what we got. And you can tell, I put the numbers here on fastest one, two, three, four on the advertised. And over here, one, two, three, four on the 16 inch, one, two, three, four on the 18 inch. So I don't see these 2,500 feet per second velocities that people are talking about. Maybe I don't have the right load data. I even saw one comment that said that factory ammunition in the 6.5 Grendel was just faster than the load data that was out there. Well, I don't really see that either. Don't see that myself either. So most of this data is 24 inch barrels and the Grendel does well in a 24 inch barrel, but it's not what I want it for. I want it for a short 16, 18, maybe 20 inch barrel carbine because I like that little short compact package. And this is well enough for me. I really like this CFE 223 in the 16 inch. We dropped some here in the 18 inch. Don't know why that would be. The 18 inch is a stainless barrel, whereas this is a parkerized barrel. Maybe the, that has something to do with it. Can't say for sure. Looks like the H335 starting to come alive in that 18 inch barrel though. Over 2,400 feet per second. That's pretty good. I'll take that. Really, I'm, I'm satisfied with any of these. I'll probably not use Varget so much. Varget's a stick powder anyways, whereas this, this, and this are all spherical ball powders, which I tend to like on this turret press. Seems like they that meters a little bit better for me. So I'll probably steer away from Varget, but honestly, between the BLC2, H335, CFE223, I don't think you're going to go wrong but I don't think you're gonna get 2,500 feet per second from a 123 grain bullet out of a 16 or 18 inch barrel without going over published data. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I just can't find the published data out there. Who knows? Here's some of the primers. None of the primers had over signs of pressure, which I'm not a big fan of reading signs anyways from pr uh, primers. Sometimes you can see it, sometimes you can't. But all of these were max charges, so you would think there would be some, starting to see some signs of overpressure, but I don't. So 
But yeah, maybe if you all know some other data that's published, legitimate data that gets more velocities, let me know. Or another powder that does better than these that you've actually tested now. I'm not going off off of that load data itself because that's unreliable whenever I'm shooting 16, 18 inch barrels and they're using 24 inch test barrels. So anyways, that's what I got for you today, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Until next time, guys, stay tuned.